Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some new Eden Fleet Works and today I am going to show you the Amar Impair War. This is the ship that is sitting right in front of you right now uh, along with the many color variants of the ship uh, and essentially this ship is done, it will be ready for release tomorrow. So, excuse me, I, I believe uh, it's done as, as done as it's gonna be for tomorrow. Tomorrow should be the release of this ship so I decided that I'll finish it as much as I can and to the best uh, ability that I can and release it for tomorrow. Keep in mind that future updates may happen to this ship as always. And, well, here we go. So, real quick, let me just show you the, uh, the features of this ship. Um, a more official video will come out in the future, but I just thought I would show it to you. So, right here we have the Standard Edition, which features uh, brown armor plating, or, or should I say bronze. Uh, white base coat and black engine areas and underbelly because uh, black seems to suit this better than gray. It was supposed to be gray. It's more gray than it is black on in Eve, but black seems to work better in Starmade for what I'm trying to convey, which is a nicer contrast. So I stuck with the black. But uh, anyway, let's uh, go inside. We have uh, four turret hardpoints on this ship, one on the wings, one above. Not, they're not wings, they're just like the edges. And uh, one below, and it's of course got yellow lighting. Cargo bay door. This is the cargo bay. Very yellow lighting inside. Very yellow interior. We have the pod room, which would normally be used for accommodating the crew, but the pod pretty much controls the entire ship without the need for an additional crew member, so pretty much nobody else needs to even be on this ship if somebody's piling it through a pod. We have one crew quarter, on the other side we have the second crew quarter with the first aid kit built into the wall. Back here is uh, information about the ship, characteristics, role bonuses, fittings. This uh, only has 115 cubic meters of cargo bay space, so I've put down one plex uh, storage. Back here are things like the jump drive computer as well as two modules for the ship. Two module slots. These are medium slot modules. The low slot modules are down here. And there is a bit of logic for some blinking lights, which you may be able to see if I come down here. Yep, there they go. And that's it. That is the uh, standard edition. Right here we have the Saram edition, which has uh, obviously got some red on it instead. And the red filters in through the inside. This is something that I'll be doing in the future is uh, filtering this color scheme not only to the exterior but the interior as well. Right here we have the Tosh Mercan edition, which is uh, gray and red and black. We have the Kadon edition, or at least I believe it's Kadon. Kador, maybe it's Kador. I don't know. I actually don't know. It could be Kadon, it could be Kador, but inside we have a blue and white combination. Right here is the Art de Chapeur edition, which is green on white, with a very green interior. I'll see if I can tone that down a bit, because it is a little overwhelming in some spots, particularly right here. And we have the Court Chamberlain edition, which is basically the edition for the people that essentially serve as the right hand of the Emperor. So this is a bronze and gray color scheme. With black accents and right here is the Conid edition now this right here is my personal fleet edition my fleet will be the Conid edition of the uh, for the Amar Empire uh, from each of the races I'm going to pick one color scheme that I will keep for my personal use and you guys will unfortunately not be able to get your hands on them like ever. If I, I do release it, it will be once in a lifetime. Not once in a lifetime. It'll be a rare event if I release these for the players to use, uh, but I will essentially be releasing them once in a while as a special reward or some sort of prize for something, I don't know. But uh, that's the plan. This is my personal edition. It features blue lighting, which I absolutely love, and a very dark interior compared to the other Amar designs. The Amar... Uh, definitely do not go with this type of... This looks more, I don't know, Mordu's Legion or Kaldari, which is very, you know, steel-colored, steel-inspired, uh, symmetrical, uh, sharp angular designs with cool colors. 
And this is definitely not the Amar style, uh, at, at least not the default style, which is all curves and gold and white. So, that is the Amar Impair Orb. Now, I have discovered something while building these ships, um, and it is something that the community does not seem to understand at the moment, and I think somebody like Calbiri may take a bit of interest in this, so if Calbiri's watching, I hope uh, he's uh, uh, getting a, a, good, a good whiff of stuff to come from me, because what I've discovered is something that, again, the community doesn't quite understand the problem uh, about. Uh, there's a problem associated with this, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain right now. This ship has very little shielding. And this is based off the number that Eve has given me. Eve says that this ship has very little shields, and that is customary to Amar ships. So if we uh, if we go inside here, and we look at the characteristics, the roll bonus, we find things like you know reduction in small energy turret activation costs, which means that energy turrets cost less power. A bonus to the energy turret damage, which means that I have to add those blocks. Something that I have not done yet so that turrets can get a bonus if you attach them to the ship. 15% uh, bonus to tracking disruptor effectiveness. Now this is something that I plan on implementing via jamming, jamming blocks. It's not going to be perfect because you need a lot of jamming blocks in order for it to be a constant effect. So basically if somebody has you locked on with missiles, the plan is to turn on the jamming computer, disengage that lock, and then reactivate it as you need it. Um, and they will have to be, they will be forced to attack you with uh, uh, other weapon systems. But uh, that's as close as I can get to disrupting the tracking of an enemy ship. So there's that. The last thing is the 8% bonus to all armor resistances. Now, instead of shields, the Amar rely on armor. And as you can tell, I've put a lot more armor on the front end of this ship, on the brown sections than over here on the Kaldari Imperor. So real quick, I'll fly over here. Or the Kaldari Heron, I should say. No! I need you. What is going on? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got a little confused. As you can see, there's very little armor covering the uh, external bits of the Kaldari Heron. And that's because the Kaldari use very little armor. But the Amar use a lot. The problem is, the community thinks that armor is a useless block in the game, or it is functioning in the most useless manner. Players constantly complain about the fact that armor needs some sort of buff, weapons need to get a debuff uh, or nerfed because weapons do too much damage and it's too easy to chew through a ship and the armor doesn't protect them, even if they put in 10 layers of armor it doesn't do any good and you know all sorts of stuff all sorts of complaints about the way that armor help reacts you know everybody's got their idea for what a health system for armor could be myself included here's the thing i have single-handedly right here with this ship proven to everyone and i will show you this in a moment i have proven to everyone that you can in fact armor tank you can in fact do it under one condition you have to actually fucking balance the ships, guys. You have to actually balance them. Players are clearly not balancing their ships properly if they think that currently it is impossible to armor tank. And I will demonstrate that right now. So, if I jump into this ship and pilot it, you will see that I have a piercing effect computer put on the ship as a defensive bonus to the ship, and that defensive bonus is right here. 8% bonus to all armor resistances. This is straight out of EVE. So I put an 8% bonus to the armor of this ship via the piercing effect module, right? And when we, uh, it's turned on right now, if I jump into the Kaldari Heron, and uh, real quick I'll show you the weapon systems that I have installed, you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 turrets on the ship. I have attached 12 cannon barrels in those six turret locations, three blocks long, with 50% overdrive attached to the system. Right? 50% overdrive, 12 cannon barrels, each of them three blocks long. That's, I believe, 36? 
Is that correct? 24 plus 12. Yes, 36 cannons on the ship. 36 cannon blocks, right? So keep that in mind. This is all... I'm not... I have no idea how well this is supposed to perform compared to other players. But I have 36 cannon blocks on the ship with 50% overdrive effect. And watch this. While I may not be able to defend this ship with shielding, as you can see, one shot brought it down to 88% shields. One shot with those 12 barrels. 88% shields, 82% shields, 67, 55, 44, 47. I seem to be getting a little bit of a glitchy back and forth gameplay mechanic going on right now. 23%, 12%, 1%, and now we're hitting hull. Those shields are down. It didn't take very long. Now here's the thing. That armor effect is on. Let Watch as I shoot a single block and not break it. A single hull block cannot stop these 12 cannons from firing through it. Not with 12 cannon barrels, not each of them three blocks long, not each of them with a 50% boost granted by or a 50% overdrive boost. It's got overdrive on it, and it still cannot beat this armor defense bonus. And there you have it, folks. I pretty much just proved you all wrong, the people that are complaining about armor not having value in StarMade. The reason armor does not have value in StarMade is because you've inflated the shit out of your weapon systems to the point where it doesn't matter how much armor you put on a ship, your weapon systems will always overcome it. Now, unfortunately, it is uh, the common uh, uh, attitude among the community to fit your ship with as much stuff as possible. And that's, you know, the unfortunate truth about the community is that they don't understand that if they want this type of balanced gameplay, they have to create it. It's not going to happen on its own. And Calberry has explained this to me on multiple occasions. I mean, look how long it's taken me just to break down this little section. It's taking me about a minute and a half, if not longer. These individual cannon blocks are capable of doing 30 damage each. 30 damage each, times 12. And I still cannot break through that block. Because if I, if I do the damage now, it's telling me I'm doing 26. 16. 16 damage to the hardened hull, and 26 to other hull, I believe. Between 16 and 26 damage. And look, I'm just not doing as much damage to this ship as somebody else might be doing, with their ridiculously overpowered weapon systems. And that's it, guys. It's as simple as that. And I, again, I'll go back to what I was saying a moment ago. Calberry has explained this to me. Players will always build bigger weapon systems. This is why they can no longer nerf weapon systems. They have nerfed them to the absolute limit. They cannot nerf it any further. They cannot buff armor, because it doesn't really matter if they buff armor. Players will just simply build bigger guns. But if the player themselves actually makes an attempt to balance weapons out, they can achieve a ship that not only does not have to rely on shields, but can tank with its armor alone. It would take me quite a while in a full combat scenario where I am using a moving target and gimbaled turrets to take out this ship. And I'm sure it would take very long. Which is why I'm expecting most players to use my frigates with a uh, hardened, not a hardened, but a hardpoint turret mount. They're going to mount the turret directly to the ship hull instead of attaching it to a docking unit. Which will give them the most amount of control as well as the best accuracy they possibly can get. So there you go, guys. I mean, look at that. That's just ridiculous. I mean, I did not expect this to work, and it did. And I was even willing to put on less of the armor effect that I did, and I put on more of it because I figured, you know what, why not match the number? It says 8% in EVE. I'll put 8% on the ship. And it works beautifully. This ship probably lasts longer in combat than against a ship that is tanking with shields alone. It's just nuts to me. It's absolutely nuts. 
Now, it's not impossible to, you know, completely destroy this ship and wreck it, you know, with the weapon systems, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but I still haven't gotten through this ship and broken the core. If I keep going, I'll eventually get there. There it is, the core is overheating, and it's not impossible. It'll take a little while. Um, if you have perfect accuracy, it'll take as long as you it took me to do that. Uh, if you want, you can also disable the armor hardening bonus by attacking the computer. The computer is located on this wall right here. So if you take out that computer, or if you blow out this entire back section of the ship right here, there you have it. You won't have to worry about that armor bonus getting in the way of your attack. I'm thinking that in the future, players will not only realize that with my ships they can use skill more often, but they'll apply the, the balances the balancing that I have applied to my ships to their own ships and create a much more engaging experience for ship fights. Because currently, ship battles on a large scale are gonna suck uh, when, uh, you know, you include the weapons types, the, the mentality that the players currently have in the game. And with my type of balancing, players might actually get a chance to have a ship battle, a capital ship battle. That lasts a long time, as it should. It's a capital ship players, it's a capital ship viewers. It should last a long time. It should not be something that you can blow through with a single click of your mouse. So real quick, I'm gonna show you just something else that I decided to do for fun. Um, this ship right here that I was flying is the Heron and it has uh, six weapon groups. Of course there are 12 barrels, but it has six groups of weapons, right? This is a destroyer, and it has 16 groups. It has 16 groups of weapons on it, and that's how many it actually would have were it completed. This is obviously just the hull, fitted with very rudimentary systems. And uh, it's still possible to completely like wipe through a ship. That one shot took down 30% of its shields. And that's because destroyers are designed to take out frigates. So let's see how long it takes to break through this hull, even with the armor effect on. The armor effect is on, I turned it on before I jumped out of the ship. And you know, look at that, I'm doing a decent amount of damage. This ship is falling apart, and the core is overheating. Look how fast I took that ship out. And that's because I'm using a destroyer, which is supposed to eat through the hull a hell of a lot faster than a frigate. Frigate versus Frigate combat is going to be amazing with this system. Uh, this ship turns horribly, I might add. But, um, I mean, just... It's nuts. I've actually balanced it. I've actually done it, and it took me a day, people. It took me a day. I didn't even have to figure anything out myself. I just ratioed the numbers from EVE, applied them to Star Maid, made a few minor, minor adjustments. I tried to stay as true to the numbers as I possibly could, and I got a ship that can tank with its armor alone. You guys gotta stop complaining, you guys gotta understand that it's not the game's fault for bad design in terms of your ships. You've gotta make the adjustment, you've gotta change what you're doing with your ships in order to achieve a system that works. Obviously the health point system for the armor may still become a thing. Uh, I have no idea, there's been very little talk about it, but apparently it's on their to-do list for the game. To be honest, at this point, I wouldn't even care, because I just solved the problem for myself, and potentially anyone that's going to use my ships for their fights, for their, for their gameplay. So, that's what I have to say today. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Eden Fleetworks. I hope you learned something, and you hope... I hope that you can apply this to your own ships and you can, you know, stop going for the big and the beefy weapons that you all put on your ships because you all know you do it. Just settle for something a little bit smaller next time and see what it gets you. See if it, and, uh, it conveys to a more enjoyable experience. Now this video has gone on for far too long. I'm Chris Nightbringer. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe for more and I will see you all for the next one.